Welcome to Extra Time, everybody. Act three this week, Shep Messing as always. I'm Jason. We hope to have Greg back next week. Who knows? Looking at the weekend ahead, we have a big matchup at the top of the East, which seems like we do it every week. It's Columbus hosting DC United. I feel like we've seen every team in the East in the mix for first place at some point. Toronto, Chicago, Columbus getting in the mix now. DC's kind of been holding it for a while. What are you looking at in this game, Shep? Well, these are two teams, two franchises, Jason, that really have resurrected the season. Ne neither one started out well. Mm -hmm. But D.C. United, Tommy Sohn, he's really put together the pieces. They've had a good run. They're in contention. I think it's going to be a difficult game, though. They're missing a lot of players, D.C. United. And Columbus on a little bit of a roll himself. Yeah, it was an interesting quote by Tommy Sohn that you see I'll just paraphrase by saying, he basically said, we're built to handle losing a couple guys here and there. He's not concerned. He thinks they're a good team. We've talked about their depth. They've been doing it all season. They've been playing basically their entire roster. I think that as a coach is what you want. You have a, a system. You have organization. You have tactically the way you play. And if you're missing players, if they're hurt, if they're mm -hmm. gone on international duty, you, you slot somebody else in there. But the system, the formation, uh, the energy, it doesn't change. So he's done a great job. Yeah, and it's Jaime Moreno and Emilio that are missing. So it's two, you know, two maybe Fred, right? Two guys up top that that could definitely hurt them. I think you know we're, this brings up a conversation of depth and how teams sort of separate themselves at this time of the year when you have injuries and you have call ups. Those deeper teams can really pull ahead in the standings, and these are probably two of the deeper teams. You look at Columbus, you know, playing guys like Jed Zayner. Um, Andy Grunbaum played, you know, most played of the well. season already. Played well. Uh, Emmanuel Bruner, Ekbo, Leonard. Yeah, they're really getting getting a lot out of their roster in terms of Columbus. So. Well, you've been a fan of uh, D.C. United, the use of so many different players. They have two great rookies in Wallace and, and Pontius. Uh, but I think this is going to be a tough game for them. Columbus right. at home, they're on a little bit of a run. They really are. And, and I think D.C. United is missing some of those attacking options. So I think they'll sit back, try and stay organized, see if they can get something on a counter. But Columbus so good, especially on set pieces. Yeah, so we could see a new first place team in the East coming up. The other big matchup, or maybe it's not a big matchup, but it's definitely an interesting matchup, is New England coming back from Superliga after a 2-0-1 record where it really looked like they were putting something together. Can they translate that success into MLS play? They're traveling to the LA Galaxy, who are probably just beat the best team in MLS last Sunday. So, oh, and they get Landon Donovan back? Well, I... Stevie Nichols is a miracle worker, really, because what he has lost in terms of players, and Taylor Twellman now on the disabled list, right. I, I don't know how he's kept it together. I, I think they're going to struggle against L.A. Struggle is the wrong word, because Stevie Nichols always organized. But mm -hmm. Landon Donovan, Donovan is going to be energized. He, he really had an unbelievable performance at Confederations Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be missing Donovan Ricketts in goal, the Galaxy. But Landon Donovan, I think, is going to be the spark that they need. Uh, I think the Galaxy is going to get good. They get back Landon Donovan. Later this month, they get the blonde guy, David Beckham. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's that guy. The thing about the West, which makes it interesting, we've been talking about the logjam in the East all year. Now the West, with Real Salt Lake kind of climbing, Seattle's pushing up, now L.A. potentially stringing some wins together. Things are kind of tightening up in the West now as well. Well, we talked about it all year. Major League Soccer in general, much more competitive this year for playoff spots. So uh, everybody's going to be fighting it out. And again, those teams that get momentum, and I think the Galaxy have a little bit of momentum right now. They just beat... I think the best team in the league in Houston. Right. So they're going to be chomping at the bits to get a hold of New England. So the last topic for this week, we're talking about Gold Cup. After a great performance in the Confederations Cup, these players, it might be a B team, but these players are certainly trying to earn a trip to South Africa next year. Yeah, this Gold Cup is, is critical, very important. Everybody wants to win Costa Rica, Honduras, Mexico. But for Bob Bradley, and especially some of the players on this Gold Cup squad, Kenny Cooper, Robbie Rogers, Chad Marshall, there are only a couple of spots ostensibly mm -hmm. open if the U.S. qualifies, which they will, right. for 2010 in South Africa. Bob Bradley looking at these players under a magnifying glass, this is their last opportunity to shine. And it's a good format. I mean, you're playing in a tournament format, so he's going to get to see these players competing at a high level. And I think when you're looking at the roster, you're looking at, you know, Josie Altidore is probably going to be on it. 
Charlie Davies is probably going to be on it. Granted, you're always worried about injuries, so you needed you know some depth. But you know he's looking. Does Kenny Cooper fit into there? Is that is Kenny Cooper a guy who's going to help this roster and help them win when it gets to South Africa? Yeah, part of every national team manager, the job is manage the team, manage the players. Does Bob Bradley want to win Gold Cup? Absolutely. But more importantly, does he find one or two or three players that he thinks will be in the team next year? Yeah, and when you say does he want to win, the more games you win, the more games you play, yep. and it's a better chance to see these players. Guy, I think Chad Marshall, you know, defender of the year last year in MLS, kind of resurrected his career. Definitely, when we were talking yesterday about depth as center back, that's a guy that I want to see make his mark in this tournament and get onto that radar for you know, South Africa next year. Well, th these are steps in the evolution of a player. So Chad right. Marshall had a breakout year. Uh, he had a history of injuries, inconsistent play, and then last season, wow. I mean, unbelievable. Right. Now do you take it? Can you elevate it? Can you do it at the next level, at the international level? Well, that's all the time we have for you this week. As always, you can email us at extratime at mlsnet.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Jason, ET producer. Greg will hopefully be back next week. We'll see you on Tuesday.